celebrate his pole position. Denzel went out this morning and bought himself the world's biggest rear vision mirrors, Alan Grice, because he's going to need them in this uh, first opening lap, isn't he? Yeah, he certainly is, but and so too the other guys that are behind him aren't uh, used to road racing, but I think more power to them. The fact the fact is that there was a, a race track and had rain on it, they had rain tyres and the first six went out and qualified as they should have done. They are involved after all in motor racing, not crocheting and they've done the right thing, more power to them. Charlie O'Brien yesterday set the fastest lap in the dryer, 1 minute 4.3 seconds. Charlie was anything but pleased when Denzel Mead broke the unwritten agreement between all the NASCAR drivers yesterday and went out and, po and qualified for pole. Oh, I think it's going to make the opening race a very dangerous one because these guys are five and six seconds a lap slower than the lead guys. So uh, they're trying to do their hardest out there and not even looking in the mirrors to find uh, to see us coming through. So it's going to make it a very dangerous situation. The, the, it's always going to be a dangerous situation. The fact is there are the cars that you, you can pass uh, on this occasion, the beginning of the race, it's going to happen on the way through the race anyway where you come up to the lap. The fact is there's a track there. Yesterday it happened to be wet. Uh, the organisers have got out wet Goodyear tyres from America specifically for that reason. Uh, the drivers went out, six of the drivers went out and qualified. They are one, two, three, four, five, six on the grid. Congratulations to them. What a shame the other blokes uh, didn't get out there and do what they're supposed to do and uh, practice on the track. Can I say something now? Absolutely. It is history in the making yep. here because no NASCAR ever has put on windshield wipers or rain tires yep. and run a road circuit or an oval anywhere in the history. Some 50 odd years, John, of the sport. So pole position and an historic one indeed goes to Denzel Mead in the Macro Vitamins Oldsmobile with a time of one minute, 26 seconds. That's about 22 seconds off the dry weather pace. Second on the grid is car 55, George Elliott, the Chevrolet. Then comes Ron Goodman in the Commodore, followed by Paul Freestone in the Pontiac, then Kim Jane in the Pontiac, and then finally Walter Giles in the Chevrolet. They were the six who qualified yesterday. Now here are the guys that took the points, of course. Max Dumsday is seventh. That is Barry Graham, eighth. Ninth is John Faulkner. Tenth is Charlie O'Brien. Watch him try to charge that Thunderbird to the front. We'll see what happens. 11th, Ian Thomas in the Oldsmobile. 12th is uh, Neville Lance. 13th is Gene Cook. Then Barry Blake, 14th. David uh, Gruss is in the 15th spot. Tony Southwell is 16th. And Jim Richards, 17th. 18th is Graham Smith. 19th, Adam Pay. 20th is the Robinson car. 21st is not Terry Byers. He has withdrawn from this event. One lap remaining now, two kilometers behind the pace car before we start the historic NASCAR race, 20 laps of the Eastern Creek Circuit. And did you hear what Billy said? 17th place is Jim Richards. Now, he's driving the car that you used to drive, Alan Grice. Just what can he do to make up 17 positions? Look, he's not going to have all that much trouble. The fact is that we've already spoken about the, the compilation of the grid, and, and that's the way it is. However, the object is now to, uh, for, for people like Faulkner and uh, Charlie O'Brien, Ian Thomas, uh, and uh, certainly Jim Richards, the guys are they're going, to be going to be quick, just need to play it cool. They've got 20 laps here. They've got other races coming up. They play it cool. They don't go mad at the beginning of the race. They work their way through the field. The, the front six guys aren't really going to be a major problem to no. They'll work through the traffic. If they, yeah. I mean, you've got to get by traffic in any race you you've run. Got to use tra and you've got to use your head, and you've got to use the traffic. And if they just play it cool, pass at the appropriate times, they won't have any problems. John, we want, we want the fans at home to take a look again inside that uh, George Elliott car, if we could, just momentarily before we get ready for the green flag. We were looking at George as he was sitting there very comfortable, and hopefully we can go back on board with him for just a moment, and, and it will show you not only uh, a cross pattern of things that, that are there with George, but how relaxed he looks, and, and, and the shield and his helmet, a very clear view of George himself. Uh, he's sitting there on the outside of the front row. That's an ideal realistic place to be sitting uh, for the start of this NASCAR first of three uh, events today. Now there'll be two 20 lappers and that finale one for the money and the points is a 15 lapper. Okay, only two corners remaining now. The pace car should pull off and then Denzel Mead and George Elliott will find out what true firepower is about as a few of the faster cars at the back of the grid start to work their way up through the field. Well, George uh, may look pretty cool and calm, but uh, I know that George is one of the guys that uh, gets very worked up before the start of a race. Uh, he really has to uh, think about it and calm himself down. We're pretty uh, close to a start. I imagine the butterflies and the, uh, the old ticker right now is pushing. 
I know how you'd feel before you hit the throttle and go up through that gearbox on the start of one of these. It's working for Grice right here in the in the commentary position, I can tell you. <laughs> OK, the, the, the pace car is off the track, so we're now in the hands of the starter to see whether we get a start in this, uh, this NASCAR championship. And they do. The green flag is out. And George Elliott on the outside of the track. Can't pull up Denzel Lee. And Lee, in fact, takes the lead through turn one. Look at traffic be no factor whatsoever. Here they come, up through the first left-hander, down the second one. These are the NASCARs. They weigh 3,500 pounds. These men are gladiators as they manhandle these steel chariots around the second left-hander. And Elliott now wants to put a charge on Damsel Mead as they go to the first right-hander. Here comes Blake. Here comes O'Brien. They're the ones that cried, said it'd be trouble. I don't see any trouble. They're coming up through traffic smooth as a flitter. And the explosions you hear, incidentally, ladies and gentlemen, are the fireworks that are going off here at Eastern Creek this afternoon. There's no problem on the track whatsoever. Hard on the binders as they come over that hill for the first time uh, at speed. And we noticed that they, when I say binders, folks at home, I'm talking about brakes. Here is Charlie O'Brien working the gear shift, working the clutch. Look at him manhandle that steering wheel. Now, you've got to be in good physical shape. Alan Grice will tell you, you are really a physical gladiator when you battle one of these things for two or 300 miles. Right, Alan? Yeah, indeed. Uh, they're very hot and sweaty things. And Charlie's already up behind the Valvoline cars. I think it's Graham. OK, George Elliott takes the lead. Down the end. Will be in second position. Kim Jane in third. John Faulkner in fourth. And there's Charlie O'Brien. Yeah, Charlie's been through very well. Sixth place. Barry Graham is your fifth place car. No doubt about it. Brian is sixth. And uh, then Maxie Dumps at the championship. The champion who is back there in the eighth spot. He should be up for me. And Thomas with a good run. He's back there in tenth. George Elliott doing a good job out in the lead. Yes, he is. And consolidating his position putting down the seconds that count. Talked to his brother up here in the booth prior to our, our telecast today. That they may sew up the sponsorship for the year and look at this channel up through that corner. Now this is where you're man or mice, right, Alan? You've got to be a man if you're going to get through these corners and fight off traffic like he's feeling the pressure. Yeah, he's got the pressure. He's got it Kim all Jane. over the back of him. Kim Jane, all over the back of him yeah. now. You know, Kim Jane is good on the road course. Don't let nobody fool you. This kid knows what he's doing. He says it's a bit different. Here they come down the straightaway. They'll reach 175 miles per hour. The American terminology, what is that? 200 and what case? Yeah, yeah, yep, certainly is. Gee, well, look, the look at the body, the, look at the yeah. body work damage on the back of he's George Elliott's car. Back. He's had a tap in the back as John Fulton now comes through in a second position. But the well, Faulkner's up in, in, in the number two spot. Third. Uh, he's third, actually. Kim James is at second. And then comes uh, Mead, Graham, O'Brien is moved still in sixth, and Dunsey in seventh. Now they're just going through the, the left handers into the right handers up into turns two and three. Here comes Elliott. He's got to fight off Kim Jane. O'Brien now begins to move up through traffic, and so do some of the other back markers who elected not to qualify here yesterday. They are poking off traffic very easy. Well, see, there it, there it is. We're, we haven't got many laps, and suddenly the race is back to where it, you thought it was going to be because of, of the, uh, the dry times that we saw and the, the experience from the road race drivers. They've picked their way through. Nobody's crashed. Nobody's upside down. What, what were they going on about? Well, Charlie O'Brien at the moment right on the back of Barry Graham. So we look at this enthralling dice for the lead. Well, here's Faulkner coming up. He'll go into second at least, maybe even first. At the next braking area, I'd suggest that Faulkner will go through into first position. Well, there's, no doubt there's, there's, there, there, there's Denzel Mead's car off. So yeah. he was the pole sitter. He succumbed to the pressure back yep. through the field. Charlie O'Brien now. He's coming Again, along the back. Green. Barry, Barry Graham goes for the braking maneuver on the inside and pulls it off. That takes uh, Charlie up into fourth place. Brian won the race that, uh, that Grice lost at the Surfer Paradise just a, a couple of years back because of a tire problem. I mean, he didn't really lose it. He punctured a tire coming to the white flag. <laughs> right, Grace? Yeah, cost a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of money. Yeah. He's got Kim Jane all over him. I mean, Kim has eaten him alive, taking him home for dinner, and he just did so as to, uh, Kim has gone around the George Elliott car, takes the lead. Elliott drops back to second, still showing some sheet metal damage. In third would be the Faulkner car. Fourth is Barry Graham. But fifth is Charlie O'Brien, and Max Dumsden is up to sixth. Faul Faulkner's actually uh, hit the front last yes. time around. And Faulkner is now in the lead. Kim Jane second. Uh, George Elliott's third. Although George is having another shot back. Charlie O'Brien's very close behind. Then Dumsney and I think that'd be 
uh, Barry Graham. Well, Faulkner's had some lap time, and there is a car number oh. 02. Hard lick into that wall. David hard Gross lick. in the Oldsmobile yeah. Cutlass. And guess where it is? The right. Same, the same place. Exactly. Right to that area that we said would be very dangerous. Look at that. Yeah, and instead it'll be a, I'd say it'll be a pace car job because that car's leaking coolant uh, probably all across the track. There's also debris uh, scattered across there. I'd suggest we'll probably see a pace car out. Now, there's a pace car lurking there, in fact, waiting to come out almost at the uh, this will, point of exit. This will mean some kitty litter, some stay dry, as we call it, back uh, in the States that has to go down where that fluid is. And there's a car that's got extensive damage, and yeah. that's what we didn't want to see a lot of. Yeah, he's belted that wall hard. And you can see a lot of debris on the track, a lot of bits and pieces of steel and uh, things lying about, and uh, that could be c cutting tyres down too for a lot of punctures and blowouts. Now, that's happened on lap five of a 20-lap race, so plenty of time to bring the pace car out and slow them all down. Yes. How did that Faulkner boy sneak by me, getting by with Kim Jane and all that? Oh, Kim picked off Ellie, but I missed that Faulkner boy. Just just too much to look at. <laughs> just <laughs> slipping right by him around sure. the here at Eastern Creek. There he well, is. Faulkner there. Car 46 behind him, 27 is Kim Jane. I don't understand why we don't have a four-course yellow, Alan. No, I mean, I they're going to have to clean Look, here's up. Jane come back on the inside of Faulkner. There's no yellows down there, so it's this qu is, that's a quite a legitimate move. Because we should have a four course yellow right now with that car sitting where it is. They know it's there. They know there's fluid leaking. And John, that could make for a bad situation. I think the officials of NASCAR need to see a four course yellow right now and not wait. Well, I guess we're running under a cross here of regulations of road racing because you've got a displayed yellow flag there. You've probably got a waved yellow flag where the car is, although... The car's gone. The car's gone. The car's gone. Yeah. gone. But somehow, miraculously, just it as John pushed it out of the got through, they, they yeah. pushed it. Yeah, that's fine. They pushed it out of the way. Well, that's good. Well, that's taking an awful chance, though. There's still fluid there. Should another car get in it? There's the car. But it's also snuck up on uh, Faulkner because uh, Kim Jane's got the message, I guess, from his crew on the radio. Exactly. He's just slipped straight in there. He's now first. Well, the car is out of harm's way. Let's yep. hope none of the rest of the drivers hit that fluid or debris or puncture a tire that is you can see lying all along yep. uh, inside and outside of the asphalt there in that particular corner. Here they come back to uh, start finish line in that left hander. And Jim Jane now has slipped right by Faulkner with Elliott back there in third. O'Brien has moved up to fourth. Barry Graham is in fifth. And by the way, Barry's daughter got married at four o'clock yesterday afternoon. So had he made a run here yesterday, I'm afraid his wife would have divorced him. <laughs> The race director, in fact, this morning at the uh, the driver's briefing made the point that uh, it would take a real melee for him to throw out a full course yellow today because he wanted to see good, clean, hard motor racing today. And he said they'd go to any lengths possible to clean any minor debris off the track to prevent that situation occurring. Well, they're doing just that, and that would be Al Bass Knight along with Steve Betts and, and some of them over in the hamburger, as we call it, across from us in the tower here at Eastern Creek. But uh, uh, that decision, uh, I'd have to go against them on. I'd, I'd have called a full course yellow right quick to get the car, debris, and fluid up. They made the decision, and right now it's been safe so far. So Let me throw another scenario to you here. That, 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 I mean, Kim Jane is doing a good job. He's, he's legitimately in the lead, and I don't mean to denigrate at all. But Faulkner's come through from a fairly well back down, the grid, and his car is noticeably sliding around in the, in the rear. Um, he's having two or three bites at a corner. The car is he's, he's definitely lost effect in his rear tyres. Now, that's Probably because he's had to charge hard and he's charged perhaps too hard um, coming through into the lead and now he's lost the effect of his tyres and Kim's able to, uh, certainly appears to be able to hold him. Absolutely. And you know, for the fans at home too, Alan, that, that are not familiar with these uh, NASCARs here on this particular road circuit, there's no different tyres whatsoever that they're running today than they run at the Thunderdome on an oval. These are slick tyres with no tread in them whatsoever. They're Goodyear slicks. You thump them, they're like a watermelon. It's a tyre within a tyre. They have the safety liner inside of them, which if one of them was to explode, the outer liner, of course, the inner liner would hold them up to keep them out of the wall or to let them gain control. Faulkner has definitely got a problem. He's slipping back off uh, off Kim. In fact, you see Kim starting to slide around now, so he'll have to steady it up. And also a bit of smoke, a bit of hazy smoke coming out of the back of Faulkner's car. That's Charlie O'Brien now yep. in the B-play. the Fisco car in third position. He's 4.0, no, he's 3.42 seconds behind Faulkner and closing fast.
meantime, Jim Richards, who started in 17th position, is now up into fifth place in the motor race, and he's only 11 seconds off the pace. So Richo's starting to pour on the pressure. Here We're we... riding with Charlie O'Brien. And notice the gauges. Notice his tack and everything, and he's not. He, he shows his fuel pressure gauges, everything, or Charlie, of course, has to look at. And he's running with his shield up. He don't have that shield down. Uh, he's just getting a little fresh air and comfortable. Right now, O'Brien is around Faulkner. O'Brien goes to second. second. Yep. Now, here's a guy yesterday, and there's one off course there. Uh, just briefly, that looks like Max Dumsday. Max Dumsday. That's a champion, the reigning NASCAR champion yep. here in Australia. Well, but he's back on course very quickly. Greasy tires. I think they're finding trouble with these greasy tires. Another thing to consider, we've, we've, we know that we had a lot of rain yesterday afternoon. What that does is clean out the pores of the bitumen, mm -hmm. makes the tires heat up faster because they don't have that uh, smoother surface to run on. All the, all the dirt and rubber's been washed out of the track, makes the track abrasive, makes the tires overheat a lot easier when the, tr when they, when the track's very green like that. And it is green. There was no doubt when it started, lots of green racetrack yeah. uh, earlier today here at Eastern Creek and is when these NASCARs hit the, uh, they weigh 3,500 pounds, John. That's 2,000 uh, kilos, as you would call it. But uh, still, that is a heavy monster that these guys are sure manhandling out there. Yeah, they're very heavy cars. But Charlie's doing it very well. Uh, Kim also doing a very good job. He's just got to keep it straight. If, if it isn't, if I'm right, and these tyres are going off and they're losing effect, then, but looking at their lap times, it certainly would suggest that's the case. Um, it's going to be a little bit of use your head here. True. Well, in one lap, John Faulkner has dropped from the lead back to fifth position. He's now 16, almost 17 seconds off the pace of the leaders. Jim Richards is up to fourth. 41 car loops it around off the asphalt, off the course, into the dirt. And uh, we're going to take a look at it again for you fans at home. This is John Stepanek, and you can see exactly what happened, Alan Grice. Yeah, the rear's locked up on the way in, and round it goes. There is Jane in the wall. Whoa. Kim Jane, the leader, has smacked the wall, spinning around, and he's got some extensive damage to the fuel cell area back in the rear compartment. Yeah, that's hit, that's hit pretty hard. I guess he's right out of that. Well, he's got it moving, and maybe he can get it back, but it looks pretty short in that corner. He's just lost it. Ooh. There again, the rear tires. I'd suggest there's a tire problem there. The rear tires, that's purely on acceleration there. And then bang in the wall. That's. Well, that's not too bad. It's not too good, but it's not too bad. He it may be able to continue. If they knock that thing back out, yeah. he's got a little bit hanging off. The, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Rear end. It purely depends on whether his fuel cell's been punctured, because that's well, where it sits. Just as Stepanek had spun around, here come Kim Jane out of the last corner, corner number 12, and smacks it himself after a loop. Well, yeah. that puts Charlie O'Brien now into the lead, George Elliott in second, Jim Richards in third position. So Richo from 17th position moves his way up through the field. You're with the race leader, Charlie O'Brien, right now. He's five seconds in front of George Elliott. That's a car that Charlie O'Brien came to the United States, bought off the Chad Little racing team. You may remember Chad Little. He's now driving for Mark Rippon, the uh, quarterback for the Washington Redskins. Yeah, right. So Charlie O'Brien bought this car off the Chad Little racing team, brought it back to uh, Australia. Nothing was right on the car. It wouldn't handle the first couple of races, but they seem to have it very smooth here in Eastern Korea. Yeah, the car Thank looks good. The car looks good and solid and balanced. And isn't it great to see a major a company, a major sponsor, get involved in NASCAR like that. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's very good for the future of NASCAR racing. In fact, O'Brien and I bought not one car, but two, because he bought the Davy Allison road car as well, which he still hasn't put together in Australia. That's correct. But that car is a square car. That is, it's not biased for, uh, for oval racing, and it's set up particularly to run on circuits like Eastern Creek. He bought that from the Robert Yates stable, and of course he bought it before Davy was killed this year in a tragic helicopter crash at Talladega, Alabama. There is There's a Dunsney off again. Off again. Yeah. Same area, isn't it? I think so, and I think I've, I'll bet money he went off uh, tail first. I think the rear tires are overheating. Now they're working on the Kim Jane car. Hopefully, let's try to go to Ian Campbell if we can, as soon as we can, over in the pits. Not right yet, but uh, and get an update on some of the uh, the uh, work that's going on over there. We see another one of the Vaveline cars sitting on pit road also, but they're working on Kim Jane's car. Jim Richards overtakes George Elliott and moves up into second position, and he's now only 3.4 seconds behind Charlie O'Brien. So the race is right on now between this man, Charlie O'Brien, in the BP Vista go car the Ford Thunderbird and behind him Jim Richards in the Pontiac I sure like the colors on that BP car too for sure green and yellow yeah. and white and, and like Alan said to have BP in Australian NASCAR racing that is just magnificent Billy the Ford Thunderbirds last year had it all over the uh, the Chevy based cars in the States 
Yeah, there's Kim Jones back on the track. And now it'll have a half a lap before he knows if the thing is even going to stop straight. But it looks pretty good. It's a, that's only uh, that's only extern external bodywork. I think it'll be okay. I don't think he hurt the fuel cell at all, which is sitting right over in the middle of the car that they use. And it, uh, yeah. By the way, for the fans at home that don't know what a fuel cell is, should that car overturn or rupture, that's the tank, and it has a ball inside with foam rubber, and that ball will shut off the leakage Elliot. of fuel. George that's Elliott. Trouble for Elliott early and this is bad news for Elliot he'd like to run all three of them here this afternoon but I don't think we're going to see that for Elliot unless they get that car repaired we are 13 laps into this first 20 lapper there's yet another 20 lapper and then the finale the 15 lapper for the NASCARs I want to tell you that Jim Richards is right behind him as well there is Elliot there's the disappointed face of George Elliot in the Optus Chevy Illumina inside the car he doesn't look happy at all shield is up uh, I'm sure he's talking on the radio with some of his crew, but he is just sitting there at a stall. wonder if the engine just died or something else went wrong, Alan. Barry Blake also comes to a, uh, a premature halt at the side of the track in the Buick. We keep this up. The attrition rate is going to eat us alive. Let's go uh, down to the pits where we understand Ian Campbell is standing by with further update. Bill, thanks a lot. I've got a great list of injuries down here to motor cars. Ron Goodman was the first one in with a gear shift problem. They've, re uh, they've repaired that. He's back out again. Barry Graham still in the pits up at pit day number one with a savage oil leak to the front of the engine. They're still, re they're still giving him service. John Faulkner, the Jericho gearbox has let go on the 46 car. Kim Jane, as you've seen in that spin, come in. He received service for damage to the right rear guard. They've taken the complete guard off the car. He's back out on the racetrack. And at the moment, we're waiting for George Elliott. Well, guys, you can see the attrition rate has been heavy. Let's go to John, who has got a... Whoa! Oh, Brian just about broke the rear end loose on that car. Yeah, they're both lapping now, O'Brien and Richards, at about one minute and six seconds. That's about two seconds off the pole position pace in the dry. So they're really down to it this late in the event, Alan Grice. And uh, O'Brien and Richards are now separated by just one and a half seconds. Yeah, tyres are settling, settling pretty, pretty problem. I'm, I'm sure that that's the case. The cars just look tailing. And uh, anything that's gone off the road has gone off tail first. Well, you've got to remember that these cars are putting out nigh on 700 horsepower, yes. and yet they've only got a footprint of 10 inches on each tyre. Yes. So, yeah, you'd be what you'd be asking for 14, 15 inches, wouldn't you? Absolutely. For... You saw Jim come on, uh, uh, Charlie come on the the straight there with the tail right out. For those of you at home that are watching by television this afternoon, here at Eastern Creek, it's Charlie O'Brien leading at the end of 15 laps. Jim Richards is in second. Max Dumsley is in third, riding fourth, and a good run for Ian Thomas. Uh, Ian is up to fourth place. Gene Cook is in fifth. Uh, back in sixth is Graham Smith. Seventh is Walter Giles. Eighth would be the uh, Robinson car. Ninth would be Adam Pay. And tenth is the Neville Lance car. Those are your top ten in the NASCAR first 20 lapper. 1.4 seconds was the gap as Kim Jane learns that his brakes aren't right and the car isn't straight after that crash into the wall earlier and he's off again. Well, he's trying to get it refired. It doesn't look like but here he is locking it up. And those back tires never locked up, so you were right, John, no brakes. And of course, under the NASCAR rules, he can't work on that car between the races this afternoon. He's actually going to have to have race time to work on those on whatever the problem is. If I was him, I'd come in and do it right now. He's got a 20 lapper ahead of him, and the money doesn't come up till the last Look 15. at this! It's O'Brien and Richards nose to tail down the chute with four laps remaining. Car 44, that's Adam Pay, waves them through. Look at the traffic all around them. Jim Richards threads his way through. Almost gets cut off by Pay and gives O'Brien just a momentary respite as they come up the back straight. They're side by side as they go up that back straight on that short shoot. Now, uh, let's see if Richards can really, he's wanting O'Brien bad. O'Brien's in traffic through that second left-hander. There's a shot from high above Eastern Creek. You can see now O'Brien trying to pull away, but Richards gets another one of the back markers. He's headed after O'Brien. There was a couple of lucky breaks there for Charlie. He just put, was able to pull a few yards away, but uh, looks like uh, Jimmy is uh, be on the charge and be able to get back. Look at those cars bounce over that hill with the air, wheels in the air. It's a great sight, isn't it? Alan, with those with those chicanes, those little bumps, will they hurt these tires? Could that be no. part of the problem? No, no, they won't hurt the tires. Uh, the tires just like a bit of air underneath them sometimes, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> the one in, in other words, get a little air breather. Yeah, huh? sure. But look at uh, Charlie is really 
careful and to keep the car straight coming on, on there. He was really trying not to get it sideways because sideways just generates more heat. Johnny, you can see where Jim Richards come from. Well, yeah, 17th position on the grid, now through to second position. Beautiful driving, nice and smooth, nice and relaxed, worked his way through the field, set himself up now so that even if he finishes in second position to Charlie O'Brien, he'll be on the front row of the grid for the second of our three NASCAR races here today. And that's exactly where Jim Richards would like to be. Five times to his 1,000 Bathurst winner. This man is an absolute sensation in any car you put him in. And Alan Grice, the only thing I guess you'd like better this afternoon is to be in that car yourself. <laughs> Yeah, I've won some races in that car, and uh, I would have liked to have been here today, certainly. But uh, I've got another bit of a job that's been taking up a lot of, uh, a lot of time, John. Parliament. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I call politics, I believe. That's the Honourable <laughs> Member for Broadwater with us in the studio this <laughs> afternoon. Absolutely. Charlie O'Brien about to get cut off, guys. About to be cut yeah. off through that corner. And I mean, literally, luckily, he didn't damage that car. Well, that Denzel uh, doesn't have rear vision mirrors that work terribly good, but uh, everybody knows that, so that's fine. You just give him a bit of room. Charlie just did that. He did the right thing. Hasn't uh, pushed into the guy and therefore brought the guard over in his own tyre. And I guess that equal evens it up for the couple of bad books that Jimmy got just shortly. 1.3 1. 1. seconds now is the gap from Charlie O'Brien to Jim Richards. Then Max Dumsey is maybe 20 seconds in arrears. What is happening? Oh, that's... Yeah, Walter Giles is blowing the smoke there in car 91. And, and we get the word that, uh, of course, the uh, 41 car, and that is uh, John Stepanek, is about to be black flagged. For what reason from NASCAR, we don't know. We are on the 19th lap, working it right now. Will be the white flag when the leaders come back. O'Brien gets back here. He'll be looking at the white flag, John. Walter Giles there blowing a lot of smoke and hopefully not dropping oil all over the race line. As he makes his way back to the pits. I think he probably is. Well, you'd hope he's not, wouldn't you? You'd hope he'd pull off to the side. There he goes. Right now, we're going to go this all the way around right this racetrack, gentlemen. It's going to take us a while to get them all in. White flag yes. comes out now. Here's the race for the lead between Charlie O'Brien and Jim Richards. You can see the two of them in your shot. One shot, the two of them, well, almost nose to tail anyway, but certainly less than, uh, than 1.1 seconds between them. There's a and, and only oh, three quarters of a lap to go now. Charlie O'Brien holding the lead. Will Jim Richards have a demon go at him? I think the gap's too big, Alan Gross. What do you think? Oh, certainly, particularly with the other ra races coming today. But bear in mind, there was a lot of oil around there. Maybe can, somebody can get pretty sideways in that. But I think both of these guys now are going to be using their head. They're in first and second position. Uh, that'll do. You can see Charlie's easing up. Uh, that'll do, first and second. <laughs> Maybe Jim says not that'll do. Oh, Richard, oh, you've got these other races. He, to he is on him. He is on him. Jim Richards is there. He has nailed him right down to the rear deck lid. Here comes Richard. Look to the inside. Look to the outside. Float the car. They touch. The crowd is going wild in Eastern Creek. <laughs> Go, Richo. It's top stuff. <laughs> But what a battle there for a few moments out of the corner. And here comes O'Brien, who really shut the barn door to win this. Well, I think Jim Richards didn't really intend to win the race at that, at that episode. But I think he really intended to let Charlie O'Brien know that he could have if he wanted to. Let me say this, that yeah. if that was the last race, of the, the last lap of the last race with the points and the money on, Jimmy would have got through that hole. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. So the winner of round one of the sensational NASCAR racing at Eastern Creek is Charlie O'Brien in the uh, BP Visco Ford Thunderbird from Jim Richards in the Valvoline Pontiac from Max Dumsney in the Oldsmobile from Ian Thompson in the Chevrolet from Gene Cook in the Ford Falcon from Graham Smith in the Pontiac Carl Robinson in the Pontiac Adam Payne in the Pontiac Neville Lance in a Ford, and then finally in 10th position, Tony Southwell in a Buick. But let's not get excited because this only means Charlie O'Brien will start from the pole in the second. 20 lapper coming up later, live right here. And then, as Alan said, the 15 lappers, were they going to get rough? and bountiful. And Billy, explain now what happens. The cars go back to the pits, but no one can work on them. Can't touch them. They can work on them under green flag conditions. I don't think they can do anything, but maybe change some tires or do a few things, whatever NASCAR has approved. Otherwise, let them shut them down, sit still, get ready in a matter of, oh, well, let's say a matter of half hour or so, we'll see them right back on this Eastern Creek facility. So if in fact something goes wrong with your car, as we see now, the uh, uh, the race time of You touch minutes. it and I'll disqualify you, John. It's 
incredible, isn't it? That's it's really it tough rules. Can I just ask the question, uh, what was all that about with regards to qualifying? Because, look, it's uh, happened. That's, that's the quick guys have got through. Right here. The, the they, Alan, they should never have said a word. They should have went on and been a part of history. Like you and I said when we were floating up on the hillside yesterday in mud thick, uh, thicker yep. than our knees and you're in a car. To see these NASCARs run, the five or six that went, they were smart. The ones that didn't, they weren't too smart.